teaching dance through inquiry learning. Firstly, I would like to start with a definition of inquiry learning. An old adage states, tell me and I forget, show me and I remember, involve me and I understand. This sums up the process of inquiry learning. Inquiring implies involvement that leads to understanding. Furthermore, involvement in learning implies possessing skills and attitudes that permit you to seek resolutions to questions and issues while you construct new knowledge. Inquiring is defined as a seeking for truth, information or knowledge, seeking information by questioning. Individuals carry out the process of inquiry from the time they are born until they die. The process of inquiring begins with gathering information and data through applying the human senses, seeing, hearing, touching, tasting and smelling. Some of the meta-language associated with inquiry learning can be a bit confusing. Digital literacy can be seen as the ability to use digital technology communication tools or networks to locate, evaluate, use and create information. Collaboration means to work together, especially in a joint intellectual venture. Expert searching and advanced searching can be seen as higher order searching to help in your inquiry process. It shows the skill, the higher order thinking skills. Students orientated learning is when students might not only choose what they are to study, but how and why that topic might be an interesting one. Some important aspects of inquiry learning are information literacy. This includes the locating, evaluating and using of information. These skills are essential to a wide variety of learning situations. Learning how to learn. Students become aware of their learning process and are therefore aware of their learning needs. Curriculum content. Inquiry learning allows learning across the curriculum. An inquiry learning unit may include maths, science, history and English outcomes. Literacy competence. Learning to read and reading to learn. This gives the students a skill they can use throughout their lives. Social skills. This occurs through collaboration, which is the key point of inquiry learning. In creating this presentation, I have used Cult Health and Murdoch as my main resources. I found both of these models to be clear and comprehensive. As someone who is new to inquiry learning, these models clearly explain inquiry learning and how, how I could implement these in my classroom. The Cult House Summary Inquiry is the foundation of the Information Age School. Guided inquiry is a way of learning that accomplishes the objectives of the 21st century schools. Inquiry learning connects students to the real world. It also builds ownership and expertise for the students in their own learning. A summary of the Murdoch model. Murdoch believes that inquiry learning challenges students to think at higher levels. It also helps deepen students' understanding and allows for higher level thinking. The Cold House model connects each stage of the inquiry learning process to an emotion. For example, during the initiating stages of research, feelings can be of apprehension and uncertainty. The Murdoch model is very similar, but has chosen different terminology to label the different steps. As I worked through my ILA, I created this process. As my area is in dance, I felt that it was important to have an area of exploration and improvisation. I also felt that this should happen throughout the process and not just at one point. Similarly, 
I wanted the students to have an opportunity to discuss their work throughout the process and therefore I added the discussion and dialogue section. This would help to make sure they were on task and understood what was expected of them. As I continue to work on my ILA, I'm trying to refine my process. I have experimented with making the exploration and discussion phases smaller so they can be seen as subsections. I have also experimented with having these same sections around the outside as a continual part of the process. Some teachers are unsure of their role in this inquiry process. If they are not standing up in front of the room lecturing, then they are not teaching. The role of the teacher in the inquiry process is to support students to investigate, question, prompt and scaffold, teach students about thinking, provoke curiosity and wonderment, encourage student contribution, make connections, and teach research skills. There are different types of data that can be used in inquiry unit. It depends on your student's age and abilities. These can include questionnaires, surveys and discussions. I used questionnaires for my data collection. However, in the future, I would also hold informal conversations. I feel this would help support my questionnaire data. This is an example of a student survey. I have broken down the information according to the SLIM analysis data. To help you understand, a description of the student's task is below. This is a graph of the results of question 1. Please note, at the time of the presentation, questionnaire 3 had not been done. All students had made a factual statement in questionnaire 1. In questionnaire 2, they had doubled the amount of fact statements made. In this graph, the students are along the vertical axis and the number of points allocated for statements are along the horizontal step axis. There are 10 students in this class and they have been labelled A to J. The A to J is repeated to represent questionnaire 2. At this point, no conclusive statements have been made. I hope to see this type of statement emerge after questionnaire 3 is completed. This graph shows the students' interest in the topic of dance in Australia. I must admit I was surprised the students were not more interested in the topic, but I was glad some of their interest increased between questionnaire 1 and questionnaire 2. Again, A to J indicates the students. 0 to 2.5 indicates their interest. No one had ticked the box, not at all, which equals 0 points. Not much equals 1 point, and quite a bit equals 3 points. I feel there is quite a big jump between not much and quite a bit. Maybe it would have been better to score this out of 4 and have a, a satisfactory amount as a score of 2 after not much. These graphs show the results of questions 4 and 5. Question 4 indicates what they found it easy to do. Most students could successfully search the library or the internet for resources. Between questionnaire 1 and 2, there was a marked improvement in the acknowledgement of others' work. Question 5 indicates what they found the most difficult to do. It was clear from questionnaire 1 to questionnaire 2 with the more information the students found, the harder it was to evaluate the information. I found it interesting that some students found it relatively easy to evaluate information. The students and myself came up with these questions to help give their research some direction. We brainstormed these questions together to make it a collaborative experience. This is another sheet given to the students to support their research. 
During the student's inquiry process, their feelings were similar to the ones indicated by Cult House. However, in Stage 1 initiation, they also had some excitement as they were very keen on making a composition. During the exploration phase, the confusion was enhanced by problems with technology, such as forgotten logins and lack of money on printing accounts. At this stage, the students are at the collection and presentation part of the process. There is some satisfaction occurring at this time, as the students are seeing their work come together. The areas I was hoping to achieve with my students in their inquiry learning are the top three from Bloom's Digital Taxonomy. These are the analysing, evaluating and creating. The students are asked to analyse the different existing dance companies and then create their own. They are also asked to create a composition. I realise this is a big task but the majority of the students have been working very hard so far. These tips on effective questioning from YouthLearn helped me and can be used by the classroom teacher to help direct the students from a simple fact-finding mission to an inquiry investigation. A brief evaluation of the inquiry learning process so far is that majority of the learners were engaged. I found the students' work of a higher standard than previous assignments. The ma minor problems that had occurred can be connected to the fact that it was the first time myself and the students to engage in inquiry learning. The inquiry task I had set was a big task and I would refine this for the future. I asked myself some questions to decide what I would do differently next time. How could it, the activity be redesigned to become a stronger inquiry model? I looked at the Bloom's digital taxonomy quite late in my process as I had already looked at other inquiry models and other taxonomies and felt I had done sufficient research. When I did look at Bloom's digital taxonomy, I was quite disappointed I had not looked at it earlier. In the document supporting this taxonomy, there were website and applications linked to each level of the taxonomy. I would use this to help redesign my task. What worked? The task had multiple parts to it. And even though this meant it was a large task, I believe it was effective. If I taught this again, I would make the task worth a larger percentage of the overall course and make it their final major assessment task. The students enjoyed working on their compositions and physically applying their new knowledge. I would give the students more time to do this. What didn't work? What would you do differently next time? I did not feel the questionnaires were effective. I feel this could be due to two different reasons. One, they were too vague and did not supply me with the information I needed. Two, this particular cohort of students did not take them seriously as they were not an accessible part of the task. For the future, I would make the questionnaire more specific to the IOA. I would also provide options for their answers, especially in question four and five. I feel that these questions were too vague and the possibility of answers too large to even contemplate answering. An example of how I could use Bloom's digital taxonomy is asking the students to submit a blog using the information they find from different dance companies. According to Bloom's digital taxonomy, a blog uses interpreting, summarising, inferring, comparing, explaining, exemplifying, blog journaling and commenting. The picture to the right of the page shows how a student can move up the levels of higher order thinking the further they develop their blog. They start with the basic creating and this happens when they create an original blog. They show skills of evaluating as they begin to become a blog moderator and comment on others' blogs. Analyzing also emerges when they insert media clipping as they move through the phases of applying and understanding, blog journaling starts to emerge until finally they are at the remembering phase. 